Once, once again, I'm Punar Chamachaya. I'm CEO of the Chopra Foundation, and I'm really excited to welcome you all to the Global Mental Health Task Force. Uh, Terry today, who's going to be kind of uh, the master of ceremonies, kind of navigating all of us through this. We have the Chopra Foundation and my co-founder for the Never Alone Movement, Gabriela, who's in transit right now. I want to maybe set a quick uh, intention uh, for this group. And I think the intention I'm going to set is a joyful, energetic body, a loving, compassionate heart, a reflective and alert mind, and lightness of being. And with that intention, uh, what I would love for us to do is just over the next one minute, just ask these questions, what we call the soul questions, just to get ground ourselves into this amazing conversation and movement, which we believe we are starting for creating a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthy, and joyful world. And the reflection is this, whether we all are just close your eyes or just relax and take a few deep breaths and ask these questions and just observe what happens on your screen of consciousness. Who am I? Who am I? We're all spiritual beings having human existence and here on a mission. Who am I? The second question, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want from this group, from this task force, from this collective uh, organizations coming together? What do I want? The third question, what is my purpose? I'm here, we're all having a, a journey on planet Earth. And as part of this task force and in general, who we are, what is my purpose? And the last question, what am I grateful for? Gratitude turns us to wholeness, or holiness, well-being. And as part of the SDG3, it's about health and well-being. And with that, let's once again set the intention, joyful, energetic body, loving, compassionate heart, reflective and alert mind, and lightness of being. Thank you again. Thank you, Panacha. Let's get started. Good to see familiar faces. Feel free to activate the chat and feel free to say hello and where you're watching in from today. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and hello. The SDG3 has gathered us here today, good health and well-being. And I'm also reminded of, you know, Dr. Deepak Chopra, who attended with us in uh, November, who will help see us through this journey, often speaks to the anecdote to this crisis of mental health is joy. And joy, and when he, when Deepak says a de definitive, I often lean in, but he said joy is the only measure of success. So our opportunity to deliver joy um, today and through this journey is is, is profound and, and called, up, called upon us to do. So threefold, uh, the, the goal here today is to get you out uh, within an hour, not to contribute to the mental health crisis, but really to uh, support it along this journey. So first and foremost is Panacha laid out gratitude. Really happy for you to be here. For anybody who has received an invite, you saw many names that are involved in that invite. So while there's many people to thank, it's truly all of you to thank that we're grateful for your, your time together and the synergy that we're about to put forth. The other purpose of this call number two is recap. Uh, Donetta will support that that recap as will uh, Lori Meadoff as well. And then the third is really the engagement for action. And many of you who have worked with the, the UN in 20 plus years, you know how driven we are around action. And another meeting is not always typically our goal. So when we get to this number three of a commitment to action, if you were involved in the November meeting at the United Nations, you knew that at the end we rolled up our sleeves, um, not because it was fashionable or hot, but we really had the chance to roll up our sleeves and talk about our personal passion. And so Panache has done a beautiful job and the team of breaking those into seven categories, which we'll talk about, and then look for those engagement points along this call. So feel free to activate the chat at any time. If there is a question that you have in the chat that we don't get to, please kindly be patient. However, the great news is in the chat, there is a, uh, a link to our LinkedIn group. And we promise to address all the questions in the LinkedIn group, which is our way of, hey, join the LinkedIn group. Um, we know that together we're better. And so we're already off to a good start. So as long as we can 
activate that synergy and energy of being together, we're already um, headed in the right direction. So thank you kindly for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to Lori Meadoff, and we're going to get you in and out in an hour. But the commitments that we're going to ask for you at the end are gentle, kind, and right in your lane. I promise and guarantee that. Lori Meadoff. Hi, everybody. There's just an amazing group of people, and I can't wait till you get on the LinkedIn to see and meet everybody in this room, because here we have grassroots workers to some of the best practitioners and CEOs in the corporate world. Uh, we have some of the heads of states, I mean, really incredible heads of states leading major organization and the best creative innovators and problem solvers. And of course, my passion, the world's largest untapped natural resource youth. We have a youth advisory board in the making to make sure that what we're creating and what we're speaking about is really translated in their language and hitting home. And we got to co-create with them. And so we're very excited to start that ball rolling with the youth advisory board. So we're going to be in this space, as Terry said, to align our passions and co-create a much needed movement together on mental health. But I want to thank everybody for coming. And we know time is precious. And we wish, I wish we could break in small groups and get to know each other. But that's not what we're doing this time. But the next time we promise that's going to be our roll up the sleeves and get to business. But we want to just today speak about the opportunities and also give some roadmaps to the potential so that our smarts, our passion will completely coalesce together as we build this incredible movement of joy and impact. So with that, Donetta, who is uh, amazing, please come and uh, tell us the, the next steps. Thank, thanks, Laurie. Um, let me just take a quick minute and add to Laurie's gratitude mentions. Share a little bit of the big picture, why we're here today and what we're hoping to accomplish. Um, Laurie's never ending, can do anything belief of all in all of us that if we can create a better world, if it puts boots on the ground to create change, Laurie is always leading the way. And that's why she's been a perfect partner for this project. So sharing gratitude from all of us on the steering committee to all of you, we are humbled and overwhelmed with the response. Um, it Starting in November uh, to now, our first virtual meeting, we thank you all for joining us from every corner of the globe to support a seed of an idea. This special project has brought so many amazing purpose-driven leaders and advocates to the table. We're now looking at this amazing garden. So from the kickoff event at the UN, I can only imagine the impact as we wrap up this next year, creating together all kinds of innovative tech-driven platforms to simple organized movement ideas. We're looking to address and support a few different challenges and empower the communities trying to find solutions for the global mental health crisis. So far, I'm so excited to listen a few minutes to Punacha, a humble visionary and the leader of Deepak's foundation, as he shares his hub and spoke approach for our journey ahead. My new friend brilliantly captures the vision as we all sat together and became the global task force. And then there's Gabriella, the fourth part of us, the soft-spoken voice guiding us through the most heartbreaking human challenges while fearlessly taking them on to help someone else. And we're so grateful she is in the mix. And my pages are sticking together. There we go. So some of our time together at the UN, we have done a deep dive through so much important insight, powerful ideas that you all share. We work to identify the areas that we could build on and create the areas of focus for this project, that we could work to create the powerful recommendations and tools to support the United Nations SDG 3. So right now I'd like to break for just a second and invite Amir Dossel, president of the Global Partnerships Forum and a, a key influence in my life around the United Nations and a UN champion like no other that can make this all mean something for all of us, the work that we put into it to share a little bit of his thoughts and talk about the SDGs and the UN landscape and some of his new um, team that's come together around this project since we last met. So Amir, will you join me for a minute? Thank you. Thank you, Donata. Thank you so much for your kind introduction. I really don't deserve this. I'm honored to be part of this August group. And I want to start by congratulating 
Honaja, you, Laurie, Gabriella, and everybody who's been really the driving force behind this. I, I remember when the initial conversation started last year, where Donetta said, look, we want to put this together. And, and before she could finish, I said, I'm in. I, and I was thrilled to be part of this. And, and I'm also delighted that Ruma is joining us uh, from the World Economic Forum. They do amazing work in the health sector. And uh, Ruma belongs to my alma mater because I was part of the health and healthcare group uh, until December. So I was privileged to be part of that. And I continue to be uh, engaged in their work. And so you'll be hearing from Ruma about what they're doing in the area of mental health through the Healthy Choices Program. Uh, so I just want to touch on a couple of quick things, actually. <clears throat> the work which this task force envisages is to change the direction for young people, people who are impacted by depression, mental health, and so on. And you, you know, the forecast from WHO is that mental health could be one of the top diseases by 2030. It's the silent disease, the, part of the NCD agenda. And I'm hoping that the work of this group can contribute to that change of reversing that decline. And I think we, there, we have two organizations who are key to us in this process. Uh, one is the World Economic Forum, and the other is the World Health Organization. All of that, both of their work is critical. And if we can be engaged on both aspects by contributing research, by contributing actions. So if, when I say research, I mean applied research, actually doing things that are making a difference in society. And I think we should report it on a regular basis to both these institutions, uh, including, of course, the United Nations, where the discussions on mental health take place virtually every year at the UN General Assembly. I, so hopefully by this September, we will have a good action plan which talks about results that can change the world. And so once again, I'm honored to be part of this group and thank you again for including me. Thank you so much, Amir. Um, we're so honored that you joined us and couldn't do this without you. So we're very grateful. Um, so I'm so happy to share a little bit more about the amazing synergy that has come together with the task force and the World Economic Forum Mental Health Leadership Team. This partnership will give us a solid start to our recommendations. And so our first official recommendation for the task force is to present, uh, you know, to be presented is that they will be our first established area of investment. They are already built and ready to go, and we will just be the bridge that leads them into the United Nations and the SDG3. And we are so uh, honored today to have Ruma here with us. Uh, we were lucky enough in New York for the United Nations event to have two of her New York-based colleagues join me for our fireside chat, which you can see on the YouTube channel in the video and also in the LinkedIn group. They were fascinating to listen to. And today, then, we get to experience um, the project through the lens of Ruma's eyes, and she, I think, was the main developer of this project. So um, I'm going to hand it over to her and let her take it from here. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks, uh, Doneta, Amir Panacha, for the warm welcome. And it is a pleasure to be with all of you and all the guests who have joined uh, from across the globe. I uh, lead the health in a mental health initiative at the forum, and uh, this is a new initiative which we started last spring. I'll give you a very brief, as precise and crisp as it can be in the form of a presentation. And I assume, Doneta, it would be shared with all of those who are present currently uh, in the meeting. And following the meeting, if there are any questions, comments, feedback, or if you would want to join us for the initiative, we would be very happy to welcome you. So just give me a moment. I will start to share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yes. All right. OK, thank you. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, out of the whole spectrum of mental health issues which we have been discussing, for the initiative at the forum, we chose 
the particular topic of mental health in the workforce under the overarching umbrella of healthy workforces, which would also include the physical health of the employees led by my colleague Jahanara, who is also on the call. And why we chose that mental health is pertinent because all of us during the most productive years of our life, we spend at the workforces. And if we see it in proportion of numbers, 60% of the world population is in the working age. And out of that, if we see 61% of the people are in the informal economy with no formal assistance and a clear gender bias with 35% of the women reporting that they have no appropriate measures for support for their mental health. And if we look at it from the spectrum and from the lens of businesses, that how much does it cost the world economy? It is a staggering figure of dollar one trillion. So keeping these numbers in mind, we fabricated and built up on this initiative. And over the course of past 10 months, I would say as we reached out to organizations approximately 50 globally now, and when we spoke to the chief health officers, the chief human resources officers, the, the leaders who are at the helm, and of course, to the employees as well, that what do they feel about their mental health and are there like adequate measures? There are certain common things which uh, we could find out across the spectrum. First was the systemic flaws, that there are obstacles in accessing mental health at their workplace. Then what are the drivers of health uh, which precipitate mental health issues at the workplace? It would be untreated issues, excessive workloads, burnouts, and the stigmas and biases which are related, even if interventions are present at the workplace. What inhibits an employee to approach the pertinent authority or to talk to his or her manager that why should they not be availing these particular interventions and at the level of the organization if we see the overall spectrum i did mention what are the obstacles from the uh, lens of the employee if we see it from the lens of the employer and the organizations uh, when we ask the organizations do their employees have benefits and services do these even exist beyond the employee assistance program whether it is in practice and whether it is whether the outcomes what they see are they are they equitable in forms of gender in forms of race ethnicity and geography do the interventions or the offerings these organizations take do they affect the overall larger community beyond their workforce so as we had seen that 61 percent of the people they are in the informal workforce which are untouched by the formal employee assistance program, are there any offerings by these particular organizations in the form of CSR or philanthropies which could aid this particular spectrum and the ecosystem that how are organizations tying up with each other? What are the partnership platforms? Of course, the task force is one of them, but what are what are the other platforms regionally and locally which could help build partnerships and take this issue of mental health at the workplace at a higher level? This is the overall mission, vision and goals, what we had uh, conceptualized for the initiative to promote the mental health of the employees with a vision to create an environment of positive mental health and wellness. And the three broad goals that how do we increase the awareness of understanding that why mental health at workplace is important to share the leading global insights and best practices which have worked across the globe in different kind of industries and across various geographies and finally measuring the effectiveness of the program both from the uh, eye of the employee that is how it is affecting the well-being and the health of the employee as well as from the lens of the employer that how does it reflect in the biz uh, in the balance sheet of the employer how do we make a business case out of it what is the return of investment if a particular organization is investing in those interventions Okay, so there is some issue with my system. Let me just share it again. Rumor, do you want me to share it for you? Are you good? Oh no, that that's okay, Prasha. I think there's some issue with the the full screen so i think i'll if, if it is visible if my screen is visible i like to go with this because it's not allowing me to share in the uh screen share mode i think we can see you 
Okay, all right. I'm so sorry for the technical glitch. So uh, as I was mentioning, this is a multi-stakeholder uh, multi initiative and a collaboration which we have uh, garnered interest of over 50 organizations. And as you see, we have industries from spectrum, from uh, public sector to private sector to governments, academia and the UN agencies and across geography. So that is like how we are eyeing so that we have like comprehensive inputs from the employers across the world. This would be the likely governance structure of uh, the initiative. While we have the executive champions at the top, we'll be having uh, two steering committees, one physical health, one on the mental health and the overall community of the healthy workforces and two working groups. One would be focusing on the interventions that what are the best practices and insights being deployed by the organizations and second that how do we measure those interventions. So we are currently in the stage of building up these working groups and hopefully by next month uh, we would like to go full swing with uh, these two particular working groups and uh, by hopefully by next our next annual meeting which would be in Davos that is annual meeting 25 in January we look forward to publishing the results of the work which we have done with all the organizations. So I will stop here because I know there is a time constraint. If there are any questions, comments or feedback currently, I would like to, uh, I'll be very happy to answer or even on email as well. Thank you so much, Ruma. You are a wealth of knowledge. I do want to ask one question. You know, we have so many overwhelming subjects of the World Economic Forum, one of which was to say up there with climate is the issue of divergency in the world how we are absolutely divided and we're so far away from dialogue to resolve that it's become another one of the major issues in the world. On the flip side, what did you walk away from the World Economic Forum feeling wildly optimistic about, feeling wonderful about that you might be able to share with us? I'm hoping there's not too much pause before <laughs> before your answer, because I'm hoping that uh, your what you had shared in the presentation already was optimistic about the groups that you were forming. What did you feel best about coming out of the World Economic Forum this year? All right. OK, I'm so sorry, because there was some glitch. I was not able to hear you properly. So I understand, uh, Terry, uh, you were asking that what were the results of the annual meeting which we had uh, this year? Yeah, what basically, Ruma, what did you feel most optimistic about coming out of out of the World Economic Forum this year? All right. Yeah. So this year, I think, uh, especially like the partnerships, what we have built uh, across organizations, not restricted uh, to one geography per se, and how we are linking mental health. Uh, issues across the different spectrums. Climate change, definitely you mentioned one, but how does the gender perspective come in? How does equity come in? So I feel those are the points which, uh, you know, uh, make me hopeful and also more, uh, you know, uh, inspired that what all do we need to include in our strategy and not look at, look at it from a single lens of just mental health, whereas be a more convergent and, and open initiative where we can take into ambit the feedback from the other aspects of health as well, be it like social determinants of health or be it the political or the environmental. Thank you, Ruma. I was optimistic of the reports that came out of the World Economic Forum, knowing that we have come together as a group to you know, address SDG 3, which is good health and well-being. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to go now to Panach, and Panach is going to ask you to take your time. And if there's any questions at all, because this is really the the heart and soul of the action here, as we look at uh, a hub and spoke. And for New Yorkers, the hub and spoke is when you order that pizza to go, and there's that round thing in the middle to keep the cardboard box from uh, touching the bottom. That's <laughs> that's the center of the hub. Um, and the hub and spoke also sounds like a great pub where we should meet next time. But if you have any questions, well, Panacha. Uh, works through this hub and spoke, these six slices, please uh, feel free to put it in the chat. We may not get to it in the respect of the time of this call, but we will definitely address it if you join the LinkedIn group. Panacha, it's yours. Thank you, Terry. I think uh, today of all days, there's a major drilling going on in my building, but that's what life is, right? Life 
life is existing in the chaos. And I think your design systems, which make us live in the real world. Once again, I'm Kunal Chamachaya. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to co-create, collaborate, and I think build this together. I want to set a context for this. Uh, when I came to this country, the United States in 91, 92, my first job was at Sprint in Kansas City. And it was a great learning experience for me. At that time, when you had to, had to call, Sprint had to call AT&T, or AT&T had called T-Mobile, you actually had different service contracts. None of them talked to each other, right? And then when you traveled from the US to the Europe, London, or to India, you actually picked up another phone because CDMA would not talk to GSM. So why am I saying this? Is because these num these systems never spoke to each other. And today you travel across the world, it's seamless. You have an IMEI number, you can switch. And that really became one of the grounding things when I looked at the task force, I said, as we go into the phase of designing the systems, right? We have seven different opportunities for us to come together. And, and I always say, I look at these as six different villages. It takes a village to bring up a child, right? So we look at these as different villages. How do we come together? So our goal was that why don't we create an open source platform where it doesn't matter where you are, the things I learn in India, or the things I learn in Recorded. We look at across all these areas, these are some of the buckets when I look at how do we kind of make sure that we can have consistency across all the different groups. And one, can we design a platform, a process and a platform where everybody can take it forward and move it? Like I like to use the analogy of when Linux came to the technology world, they open sourced everything, and then people took it, took it to the next level, right? So this is really one of the key aspects of how people process platforms can come together as part of this global mental health task force. And maybe for the first time, we look at mental well-being as one unit, whole health, right? It's not just, a, I mean, we can all come together, look at the person in, uh, in unison. So example over here, what we want to do as part of this task force is really look at different areas, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, recovery, support, media outreach. And then take the lens of the group you're in. Let's say I'm looking at uh, suicide prevention, right? Uh, there's a lot of amazing work which has been done by the Navy SEALs and the defense, right? There's an acronym called Is Path Warm? Ideation, substance abuse, purpose, you know, anger, they're different, it's an acronym. Maybe somebody else can use it. So we kind of what I want to do as part of this and together what I want you all to come together and we can work on this together. Look at the different processes which are common across the different work groups. We kind of bring them all together and we kind of put a platform and you open source it so somebody can take it and then you know build something in Urdu or take it and build something in Swahili or take take it and build it in their local regional and deploy the platform and technology too. And how would this look? So I just want to take just one sliver. So let's say it was just a digital mental health platform, right? Let's say we have an open, a telehealth platform we put together in the United States for looking at um, uh, ADD, uh, you know, and anxiety, or just for diagnosis. Imagine somebody can use the same telehealth platform in Africa, right? Imagine we are working on some online resources, apps, or even VR, all the different therapeutic gaming. Gaming is a big aspect of what we're doing. What we want to do is the phase one is create a global catalog or repository of all the resources available and share it in one place. The second, what I want to do is to create an open source integration. There goes the noise, and hopefully it's still okay. Then what we'll do is create process and automation, and then bring in the metrics and inter internationalization. So this is kind of a high level, uh, I would say thought process and thinking that we have started as part of the open source platform initiative. And what I would love to do is to bring the different conversations together and create a consistent process and then we platform it. So that's kind of the, I guess, the concept behind the hub. And I think this is just a first start, but the goal is to make this a very strong people process platform recommendation. So Terry, I'm going to pause because I don't want the noise to take over. So I understand the notion. Thank you. We'll uh, stay on your floor there. Don't let uh, the deconstruction uh, affect you. Thank you. What we're going to do is um, 
pick up from the work that we we left off in November and the good work that was performed by all of you. And that's when we really put forth our areas of interest and passion. And there's really um, seven in total. There's six slices. And as Panache outlined, in the center of that is really the open source solutions. So what we'd like to do is invite and ask you to look at the slices and consider which one you might want to join and lead with. Now, we'll explain each one of these briefly as we go through. We tried to put headlines there that are somewhat self-explanatory, but it's fair to say that there are many that transcend across all of the slices. AI affects every part of uh, what we are doing going forward. So does high tech and low touch, high touch. So this is really about selecting an area that you find a particular affinity to. And if there's one number in particular, that's really what we're looking for you to look for that says, yeah, yeah I'd like to get behind gaming or I'd like to get behind content creation. And of course, what will happen next is we'll break into these groups in the next, throughout the year on at least a monthly basis. We will recollect ourselves at least on a quarterly basis with calls like this. But if you feel, hey, uh, there's two in particular that you would like to join, we'll have a forum for you to sign in. You're also welcome uh, as we talk through each one of these seven areas that in the chat, if you see something that really uh, aligns with you or you have already agreed to, feel free to put your name and the number next to it. And if there's two numbers and you want to prioritize one over the other, feel free to do it. <clears throat> A couple important things to point out that was true of our event in November. Many of you felt like, look, I'm already working in this space. I'm working in this space of passion. This isn't really also about creating new action. This is about creating the action that's already underway to share with your colleagues, to share with others, to say, hey, we've already created a game. We're already working with Deepak Chopra. It is our opportunity to share that synergy of the good work already in place. It's also true that together we can co-create opportunities going forward. So whatever's going through in the theater of your mind, there is a, a movie here for you. And we just want to engage and involve. And when we talk about investment, really talking about leading with the investment of your time. And if the back of your mind, you're worried or wondering about where's the, where's the economics behind this, we too, as when we break into these individual groups, we'll discuss economic needs of each one of these individual slices and then address what action aligns with what financial needs. That's part of the task force moving forward. So I encourage you to really lean in, um, pick a number, as we explain each number. So we're going to start with the clock uh, in the in the Western world with number one, talk about a place I'm passionate about, games and immersive experiences. And I do believe Susanna is with us, or I believe also uh, could be Eve. Yeah. Eve, yes, perfect. Eve, uh, Executive Director of Take This, thank you for, for being here. And I'm so excited to hear uh, some of the thoughts. So each one of these groups, some have designated leads um, and some are looking for designated leads, but we're really looking to you to jump in and support these groups. So Eve, over to you, number one in gamification. Thank you so much. So I'm Eve Crevache. I'm the executive director of Take This, which addresses mental health across the lifetime of games from studio formation all the way through um, community interaction and community health online. Um, I uh, have joined this uh, this group of the task force um, and and I'm co-leading this effort um, on mental health and games with uh, Susanna Pollock. And I'm a little I'm new to the to the group and I'm very pleased to be here. What we imagine in this games and immersive experiences um, uh, work group um, is to develop a portfolio of potentially mental health interventions um, or other ways to leverage the power of games to um, to create uh, spaces where uh, people can learn about mental health, where people can practice well-being, when we can um, advance uh, partnerships across immersive experiences and um, and leverage the power of game studios and, and game platforms that already have a global reach. Uh, games are um, a significant uh, industry worldwide uh, with, uh, I believe, three and a half billion players uh, to date. And so the, the cultural influence 
the uh, sheer volume of players all have so much uh, to offer in terms of the opportunity around addressing mental health and mental well-being as long as we do it with care um, and and with people uh, first. And so we're uh, very excited to be involved in this effort and we're very excited to bring a really cross-disciplinary uh, group together to think about games and immersive experiences in terms of their ability to impact global mental well-being. And I am uh, very, very pleased and honored to be a part of this group. So I will send it back to you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you, Eve. In true gamer fashion, I love the uh, I love the headset and, and you know the more immersive experiences okay. that we can create, awesome from high tech to high touch. I really appreciate it. I, I'm uh, I'm excited. You know, you you mentioned uh, three billion gamers, but you know, gamification applies to everybody on the planet. And playing games or being gamified is oftentimes what we'd rather be doing uh, than most anything else. So when we can touch upon the joy of gamification, of everything it applies. So I'm really excited about this. And you know, we have a small plug here. This comes out this fall, but it's a now context of, of all choices here. And I'm just going to ask you to. Each of you to lean in, look at the numbers one through six, and seventh being it's PSA, the arts and content creation. And this is ranges from short social media uh, hits, um, bumps, all the way out to docu series. So if an area of passion that you're interested is in and around content creation or the creator of economy, this is for you. This will be led by already some great content that includes Deepak and influential A-list friends, i.e. Um, celebrity friends, delivering powerful and global call for community action. Uh, the PSA's podcast and uh, plan for celebrity filled virtual and on-site roadshow uh, to create education and activation, a vehicle to support strategic investment. And so this is really about on the ground regional community organizations and empowerment events, including G4C video game festivals, arts, a myriad of events, community content creation projects. This group in number two is really dedicated to harnessing the power of media and the power of influence in the arts and act activation to raise awareness about mental health issues through targeted public service announcements, immersive art installations, ad tech strategies and multimedia campaigns that aim to break down stigmas and educate the public and encourage individuals to seek help leveraging data-driven sites. This work will span various platforms. As you can see, it transcends to many of the other categories through social media to public exhibits, uh, making mental health a visible, vital conversation in our society. It's the first way to destigmatize. And as we know, for those of us passionate about the arts, the arts leads these categories and helps socialize the opportunities throughout the world. So that is category number two. It's really about PSAs, arts, content creation that arranges from short social media hits, uh, hopefully celebrities and ultimately rising influencers of the next generation right on through to the opportunity about docu-series around joy and opportunities. As we look at number three, <clears throat> and if again, if you have any questions at all. I'm sorry, uh, just wondering if Gabrielle is still on, maybe she can chime in. Oh, Gabrielle. Gabrielle is driving across the city at this moment. Yes, hello. <laughs> yes, hi everyone. Um, thank you, I'm sorry that I, I'm here will not see my face. Um, so I, I, what I just want to chime in here is that everything that we are attempting to do in an integrative um, way, and I think these are words that are in terms of everything. We might be losing uh, a little bit, Gabrielle. Yeah, you know, take it over. I think she's driving. Yeah, no worries. Thank or you. the G20. Hello? Yeah. yeah this, Hello? Can you hear me? It's muted. I think it's hard. No worries. Oh, Gabriel. it's not connecting? 
we we hear every other word, but the words that you are using are spectacular. But uh, in 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 deep respect to Tom, I'm just going to uh, jump ahead to number three here, if it's all cool with everybody. Uh, empowering underserved communities. You know, when it comes to 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 mental health, and and if you get into a, a space where you can speak, I'd be grateful uh, to come back in, Gabriella. But when we talk about underserved communities, when it, the subject of mental health, it's not a they; it's all of us. But in particular, Gabriella has really led the charge with great passion on the Never Alone Initiative and the Chopra Foundation. She's masterful at leading this. Um, it's a development of regional mental health and education and community best practices, and not only best practices, but positive deviance for on the ground pilot programs in underserved communities. These programs will include open source training, resources for mental health professionals, educators, and leaders and strategy for individuals in crisis, uh, including recess resource directories, community guidelines, and access to mental health services and online support groups, inclusive of gender, race, disability, prison reform, neurodiversity, LGBTQIA+, LGBTQIA+, needs, in essence, help help remove the stigma for the uh, the general population. So I'm sorry, uh, Gabrielle, I don't know if you're within voice, but thank you for leading the charge on number three. You will be in good company on in number three because Gabriella uh, will be helping lead the way. So thank you for all your good work. If it's okay, I'm gonna jump to number four in respect to time. Um, and this is uh, work that's well underway. It feels very ambitious and it feels almost daunting if we were to think about having to create this. The great news here is crisis contact centers have already been modeled and are underway to scale. And so this is a best practices playbook. Um, and the section leads here, and I met her and fantastic people involved, Kim Williams, uh, Vibrant Emotional Health, and Rebecca Jones from Mosaic. They have been instrumental in helping really put this whole group together uh, way back in November. So thanks to both of you. In this category number four, documenting technical and operational best practices and practical considerations for establishing access to crisis call centers and call routing to support help seekers, to providers and to counselors. This is real expertise. Um, at the at the touch of a at the touch of a call at the touch of AI at the touch of a a text and this team can be considered a horizontal service across the other task force team applicable across uh, multiple use case and environments and I was so impressed with the work that's already underway in the crisis contact center and it gave me great comfort to know that um, this work is meaningful powerful and well underway so a great group. I do want to turn um, this one over in um, into Lori in a moment. Mm -hmm. And number five is about disinformation, high impact areas, climate crisis, trauma, and campaign development. And mm -hmm. as Lori likes to say, boots on the ground that she deploys youth masterfully. And while disinformation has been, you know, the enemy of humanity, clarity is our is the key. And over to you, Lori Meadoff. Yes, um, I just uh, we have, with cost, cost of time, I'm going to really just cut to the chase. This this group needs everybody. I mean, we are, you know, when you see that 95 percent of news is negative, climate crisis, gun violence, war, conflict, a broken humanity. I don't know about you, but I've, I've spent my life building safe spaces to turn pain into purpose and take this pain somewhere to talk. And I am stunned at as an energetic feeling person i am stunned some days on how to move forward and thank god for the work of never alone and others that i just keep i mean sherry foos your radical connectivity that's all i keep thinking about i need that connection we need to find formats here so i want to right away turn over to two colleagues that are on the steering committee one is jay kelly you are gen z you are who we're hearing from so i'd love you to say a quick word Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to speak here on behalf of the millennial generation. Our generation grew up around multi crises, the spread of misinformation, fear mongering, violence, and growing inequalities. Culture wars, loneliness, and weak communities left us without mentors and elders who could teach us that knowledge can be very dangerous without wisdom, such as learning that the greatest thing to fear is fear itself. 
So after becoming the first adopters of social media, we millennials suffered from mental health challenges such as addictive behaviors, a lack of self-confidence, and an inability to trust and communicate with others outside our bubbles. We quickly lost faith in humanity, achieving progress to the extent that many millennials don't want to bring children into this world, especially because of climate change, waste pollution, and biodiversity loss. However, I believe millennials can, train, can transform our challenging experiences into progress by turning pain into purpose, like Lori said. We can do so by all generations, co-creating innovative, regenerative solutions with resilient communities and creatively combining the best of indigenous and modern solutions. I'm so grateful and excited for this task force to integrate our individual and collective visions for healing trauma and growing well-being. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. And also, um, you know, we talk about war. I've had the unbelievable privilege of working with Ranit Zimmer, the CEO of Project Rosanna, a place that brings Israeli and Palestinians together in health diplomacy. Ranit, thank you for joining us from the region. Thank you, Laurie, and thank you to everybody here. I really feel like it's an enormous privilege to be part of this group. Um, as Laurie said, I'm the CEO of Project Rosanna. We're an international health diplomacy organization that contributes to addressing the healthcare disparities in Israel and Palestine by creating, and as you like to use, I've been, I've been hearing it a lot this evening, uh, evening here in Tel Aviv, a co-creating uh, collaborative initiatives between Palestinian and Israeli healthcare actors. Um, of course, when we talk about trauma and we talk about mental health and we talk about, I think somebody mentioned before, an era of chaos. Here we are living through something well beyond chaos. We are living through tragedy. We are living through uh, cumulative trauma, right? So you're talking about generations of trauma and we know that these generations of trauma are going to continue on in the next few decades. So when Project Rosanna starts to, 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 to initiate any of its activities, we always look at the needs on the ground. We listen to the communities that we serve and mental health is at the forefront of every single community need, whether it's the isolated communities uh, of women in the West Bank who never even think about themselves, you know, women as, as, as the protagonists of their communities mental health doesn't come in because they are never the protagonist. And, you know, here we are, we're trying to listen and we're trying to hear and 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 we're getting in touch with, with these women in communities to suddenly say, hey, my life matters too. And we are empowering them to enable them to, to uh, determine and decide for themselves what is their well-being. You know, we, we're working with communities in Israel and working with communities in Palestine addressing health care even you know it just even in the last couple of months uh, the most important thing has been the resilience uh, uh, as we were saying of workforces so we're looking at the healthcare workforces which are really at the forefront of war what Rosanna has been doing is uh, leveraging our asset of um, the binational school of psychotherapy so we have had psychologists, Israeli and Palestinian psychologists working together for the last six years, learning and working. And we've leveraged this asset. We've provided healthcare teams uh, at our partner hospitals with psychologists so that we can create resilience measures uh, and workforces uh, uh, can, uh, can start to address the mental health issues that they're being impacted with. And um, it really, as I said at, at, at the beginning, uh, it's at the forefront of everything. And if we ever want to consider moving forward with peace or peace building, we need to find the strength from within and we need to really address our own well-being to move forward uh, with with peace, which is, you know, what Rosanna aims to do. So thank, thank you again you so for, for, uh, for, for letting me uh, join. Thank you, Laurie, for everything, Jake. Um, and uh, back to you both.
No, thank you so much. I mean, the amount of, 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 of uh, processes and already existing know-how in this room is staggering. So please join these committees and join these pillars so we can move forward. Terry? Thank you, Lori. We have two more to touch on, but I, I, it's hard not to be so touched by Ronit and her work. And in the moment of, you know, the deepest stress on planet Earth, she is proof that peace is possible. And even moments of joy of women, you know, helping women through health crisis. And it's it's just powerful. I'd love to give a whole, you know, hours I could listen to her. But her work is profound and important. And thank you, Ronit, so much for the work you're doing. And you can see there's synergy between all of these numbers, one through seven. And especially when we move from five to six, scalable, sustainable uh, substance abuse treatment programs and development. I believe um, Susan Kaufman is with us today. I'll just give you a brief description, however, of this category. Um, identify viable options for expanding the continuum of treatment for individuals whose substance use disorders remain untreated or unresponsive for available interventions. And what a great group that um, is leading this charge here in, in, in number six. It, Susan Kaufman, uh, Dr. Eddie Smith, Jocelyn Grant, Executive Director uh, of uh, Granted Recovery, Meg Fenn, Community Relations Liaise, and um, uh, Empower Wellness of Exton, and that's uh, Kathleen Kiley. I believe, um, is Susan available to speak a moment or two? If not? I, I don't know if Susan was prepared to speak, but I do know that um, Becky Jones had jumped in over on the chat and that her and Kim would like to give a few words around section four, working group four. To okay. Add All right. To so just to put a bow on uh, one through six again, and if you'd be so kind to just keep that graphic up there because we're calling upon you to invest uh, the next call in your time to place your passion around one of these numbers. Uh, one through six, or uh, join Panache, an open source mental health platform. So there they are, you know, in headlines. If there's a place of passion where you choose to lead, if you don't see yourself there, um, there's an opportunity, a catch all kind of a, you know, put it in the chat. But if you have questions, once again, please, I, I, I implore you to enjoy and join our LinkedIn group to answer any questions and to follow up. I think the time commitment is not, it's not extraordinarily overwhelming. I think you're going to want to, knowing the nature of all of you, want to give more, but at a minimum that we gather in these groups once a month and then once a quarter we gather as a large group and hopefully reconvene again at least two more times before the General Assembly at the UN. So we have lots of good synergy planned. And so to Donetta's request, Let's just jump back to number four here and talk about crisis contact enable us best practice playbook and uh, positive deviance at number four. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, wanted to first just you know, share how appreciative we are to be a part of this overall solution and part of the opportunity to just drive great change in the world itself. Um, my name is Rebecca. I'm the leader of Mosaics. We are a conversational AI business um, who work very closely in partnership with Kim Williams and Vibrant Health. And together we have supported over you know, several decades the 988 crisis line, veterans line, and several other um, crisis lines here in the United States. Through that partnership, we have been in development of a contact center um, crisis support um, best practices. I want to give Kim a few moments to speak as well as she has such a depth of knowledge and experience in this space and we're excited um, to, to invite others into this space. As we know from a global perspective, there are many others working in the space in other crisis care, other crisis contact centers, and really bring a collaborative approach um, to this component of the overall solution so that we can bring these best practices into other environments and other countries um, and really help to raise awareness. Um, Kim, I would invite you to, to introduce yourself and, and talk more about the vibrant health work that you've been doing for many years. Thanks, Rebecca, um, and greetings, everyone. So delighted to to be here and and be a part of this movement with all of you. Um, and just to you know echo the the sentiments from Rebecca, you know, just have been so fortunate 
to um, lead the the national lifeline, you know, in the United States, uh, we've vibrant emotional health has been the sole administrators of that line since its inception back in 2005, which transitioned to a three digit number in July of 2022. And what I will say about this is, you know, this is a critical universal safety net for people um, that again, not only exists in the United States, but there are, you know, round the clock um, crisis centers in, in other countries and other part of the world. And it's just a really wonderful model to bring to other communities that need this critical resource for people in distress, knowing that they can reach out anytime, get connected to someone who is trained, who is caring, is going to be there to listen, and is going to offer support, you know, recognizing this is an intervention for people and also recognizing that it's not one size fits all. So really wanting to leverage um, expertise globally and put together this 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 toolkit and and so that other communities can lift up these kinds of resources for for people who are in distress so thanks for allowing me to speak for a couple moments there absolutely and i think it's been such a great partnership of you know both understanding that intersection of crisis care and support both from um, the counselors who are working with the help seeker as well as enablement from a technology perspective and how do we route that help seeker to the right next best person how do we leverage ai and generative ai in the right ways at the right points in that in that process to not only enable the counselor to support the help seeker but potentially help the help seeker get to the right place in the next in the next call so we're very excited about this initiative and looking forward to folks to coming on board thank you tim, tim and rebecca having spent time with both of you i'm so uh, delighted to know that you've already initiated so much heavy lifting. You have the capacity for scalability. Um, you speak with such comfort and confidence, and it's really important for us to know that you exist and that you're literally ready for the world and you've modeled and uh, ready to scale, which is really key and important here. Um, this is a group, as I was just scanning through everybody on this call, this is a group that marches first. And that's a key date for us as we look to March 1st. And what we're just simply asking you all to do by March 1st, which is upon us already next Friday, is to lean in, uh, pick one to two numbers where you feel that you could best support. Uh, number one, around the games. Number two, around PSA and the arts. Number three, empowering underserved communities. Number four, crisis contact center. Number five, uh, disinformation in high impact areas. Number six, scalable uh, substance abuse treatment. And then number seven at the at the center of it all is open source solutions. There's a ton of synergy here, a ton of opportunity. Together, we are better. So even if it's joining the group or finding somebody resourceful that you know that can join the group, and if in the back of your mind, once again, it's playing as like, how does all this get funded? There are programs underway that already have seeds of funding. Will there be uh, needs and desires for future funding? Unequivocally, absolutely true. But the best way to assess our funding needs is to really clearly delineate in these groups, what is our action steps? What's already underway? What is the action going forward? And how do we budget against that so we can engage the appropriate partners, sponsors, foundations, et cetera. But the good news is much of it's underway. We just encourage you to jump into one or two of these groups next and before March 1st, either put it in the chat. There's also in the chat is a link to each one of these groups. I can't wait to see you on that, that next call. And the great news is, even if you jump into one of the numbers, we will gather as a superset, uh, thanks to the great work of Donetta and her team, uh, Panacha and Gabrielle, and all of the work at, at, at Chopra and all of the work that Lori is doing, we will gather again. And we know how incredibly important that was to have a high touch experience. Uh, be it at the United Nation or that great new pub called Hub and Spoke that Panache is building. You can hear it in the background of his, of his Zoom. Um, but I look forward to our next gathering. Uh, it, it's It's been amazing. It won't be as much time as it was from November to our next call. So before March 1st, kindly uh, lean in, place your intention. You will be supported. All of your questions will be answered best that we possibly can through that LinkedIn group. So if you look to the chat, You'll see an opportunity to join in. And Donetta, Lori, and Panacha, and Gabriella, I can't thank you enough and the great work of Deepak Chopra and each and every one of you. We are better together. Hey, thank you, Terry. And I just wanted to say also the idea of doing the recommendations, if they are approved for the SDG3s, that opens up funding for those things to happen, right? 
So this is really a menu of ideas and possibilities that if we can get that kind of approval, which with the team leading it from Amir Dossal, we've had um, a number of other people at a high level in the UN system agree to come on board and help us navigate that, then that will solve some of those problems too, to make some of these things happen, right? And we've done this process before for women's economic empowerment, and it's an amazing journey. Now, all of these categories might not be what goes into the document, your job in the groups is to figure out how to build them, what we could offer, what they could look like, and then we determine if they fit into that recommendation form that the Secretary General might approve, and we go from there. And I just wanted to give one last quick shout out. I know there's so many wheels turning, and Terry, you've been just amazing doing this. Thank you so much. I just wanted to make sure to note the co-leads for Section 2. Uh, we've got RJ Nichols, Nicolosi. Um, and Laurel Rossi from an amazing um, tech company called Infilion. And we've got Rebecca Dope, who is uh, out of uh, Google to many other amazing media companies. And she also runs a, an amazing nonprofit called Exponent. So they're going to be leading up that chapter and uh, encourage you to join their group. And I also just wanted to thank Becky Jones and Mosaic for the lovely lunch they hosted at the UN for us. And uh, they we couldn't have asked for better partners, and they made it a wonderful experience for everybody that came. So thank you for joining us today, everybody, and I'll hand it back. That's it. Thank you. By March 1st, please lean in. We look forward. And if there's others that you know in your, your network and group, please invite them in. We're, uh, we're going to make this happen, and this will be a group driven by action, not just talk, but action. And that's um, all of your good work. Thank you kindly. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.